Well, this is great. We're joined by the legendary Mitch Payton, who we should probably interview more now that I think about it. And now I know you have the technology to do it. So you, you can't hide any longer. We're going to do this more. Hey, this has been an awesome season for you. Obviously, the Austin Forkner news is a crusher, but you're in contention for both titles, East and West. Is there anything you can point to why things are going so well or better this year, or are you just finally getting some luck back on your side? Um, I think more than anything, like I feel like it's the it's more of the guys. The guys are riding really well, and they haven't been like, uh, you know, they came in kind of injury free and a lot healthier. You know, the the bike has got better. It got better last year, and we continued to evolve that a little bit. So I feel like the I feel like the platform we have is really good, um, both engine wise, chassis, suspension, just everything. Like if if we've had a few different riders that have, well, a couple that have tried that, that have rode some other stuff, and they were pretty amazed at it. So like makes me feel good and I think the riders are really happy but I think I still give most of the credit to them uh Cameron McAdoo and Seth Hamaker have both had back-to-back -back great races here and they they're kind of magnets for each other on the racetrack a little bit do you think there's anything from you know practicing together a lot spending a lot of time together you know their pace seems almost identical and once they get locked together their pace is high which has got them on the podium but man they're almost inseparable the last few weeks I think that's just uh luck like I mean I don't know, you know, like I don't believe in some of those type of things. Like I believe, you know, Cameron and Seth are riding really well. And, you know, they're they're this far away from a couple of wins. So like basically what we have to do is turn, you know, the the start in the heat race or the start in that LCQ that needs to come in the main event. Hey, if uh, let's say McAdoo or Hammock or pull it off in the east, you go pretty far back with these guys, especially Seth, because he was even a uh, team green as an amateur, but you've had Cameron around for a while. I want to first ask your reaction to the unfortunate news of Forkner. And then what would it mean if you got one of these loyal guys who had been with you for a while and they finally got to the top of that mountain? I know that was the hope with Austin, uh, but would it mean a little more if a guy like that uh, gets it done? Cause you definitely know how, how big a hole you can get into and how quickly. Well, you know, like the, well, it would certainly mean a lot, but I really got to tell you, and maybe some people didn't, but I wouldn't have hired Cameron if I didn't think he could win a race or win a series. So, like, I do expect him to, you know. Did it happen last year? No. Could it happen this year? Yes. And Seth, you know, like, I really want that kid to succeed. That's just me personally, you know, like both of them. So, like, I'm behind him 110%. As far as anything I can do for them, I want them to achieve their goal. And they both are hardworking individuals. They're, you know, they don't jack around a lot. They're, they they want to race their motorcycle and achieve goals. And, and I think that's awesome. The Austin situation was really sad. Um, you know, it, it sucks because we have, you know, everybody's going to say, well, you've been there before with him and all this kind of stuff. But I really felt like this year... Um, he kind of turned it around and was in a more solid, disciplined uh, spot. You know, he's been working with Rhino. Rhino has made a pretty big difference in how he's going about stuff. And and truthfully, the two of them have, have I felt like, turned it around. And, and I really felt like, I don't think he was riding over his head. I don't think he was pushing the edge, you know, like where in the past he was always sort of edgy, you know, like, oh, oh. You'd see a lot of those. And I felt like he was pretty damn good, you know? And it's just, he missed that one jump, you know? And then it's the price you pay and he'll be okay. He'll he'll come back from it. All right, that's what we'd like to hear. Yeah, you've definitely been through the ringer with your team as well. So good luck. I, it would be really cool, I think. You probably never thought we'd get to the point where people were rooting for you because I think you were winning so much, but I think we might be at that point. I think it'd be really cool if you get one of these, so... We'll see how it turns out, right? And and the other reason to, to root for them, you know, is I yep. think they're all they're pretty good guys, you know. Like yep. I I'm not a fan of the jerk factor, so I I think they're all pretty pretty awesome guys. <laughs> yeah, we agree. They're definitely down to earth guys over there. All right, thanks for the time, Mitch, and uh, we'll see you at Indy. So now we're off to Indianapolis. That'll be East Coast time. Watch Race Day Live starting at 1:30 Eastern and the racing at seven o'clock Eastern on Saturday. 
You can watch on Peacock or outside the United States on the SMX Video Pass. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.